can have my heart oh oh you can have my heart you can have my heart oh oh you can have my heart you can have my heart oh, 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 oh you can have
give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. Thank you, Jesus. I give myself away so you can use me. the Lord everybody we're going to ask you to stand for our prayer this morning we are already in his presence glory oh father God in the name of Jesus we just want to thank you for being in your presence today Father, for we understand that everything bows to your presence and to your power. Yea, God. And Father, we just declare that your will is done in this house today. Father, you know everybody who would be here today. Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus to do it today what you determined to do before the foundation of the world. Lord, save, deliver, heal, set free, destroy yokes of bondage. Hey, God, cause us to leave this place changed for your glory and shine. And we bind the works of darkness. We come against him even now as he comes to block the flow of your spirit. And we declare, Father God, that you reign in this house today. We humble ourselves to your will and we declare glory. We humble ourselves and we cry glory in your presence. We humble ourselves and we cry glory in your presence. We humble ourselves and we cry thank you in your presence. Glory, hallelujah. We thank you, Father God, that every desire, every thought has to humble itself to your will. Oh, God. Yes, God, you prove yourself over and over to us. You have been God in our lives. Now help us, Lord, to render to you today the appropriate sacrifice of praise. Yes. And when we leave this place, let our lives be a sacrifice of praise. Woo, shot out. So that everywhere we go, the sweet aroma...
holy one righteous king worthy is the lamb you are the holy one holy one and righteous righteous king worthy is the lamb worthy
Holy One You are Lord. Seated on your throne, high and lifted up. You are holy, holy Lord. Holy Lord, holy Lord. Holy One. Holy Prince of Peace, King of Kings, Holy One. Yes, you are. You're my Savior.
Jesus. He will hear you every time you call. Oh, how precious. Oh, how precious is the name of Jesus.
Jesus, 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 have you tried? Jesus, He's all right. Jesus, have you tried? He's all right. He'll be there for you in the middle hour. Savior Jesus Christ so thank God for everyone that is here today you may have your seats except I don't, except this I don't know what you expect me to do when I came up here because woo! a habit we have a bad habit of coming into the house of God and waiting on the preliminary of what we think it's gonna be but you don't wait on him you don't wait on the, the person naturally you better go ahead and get the anointing that's already here and go with the flow
glory. Amen. We bless the Lord. Amen. For his presence. It is the anointing that makes the difference. Amen. You may have your seats. It's time if you desire. Amen. Glory to God. bless you you may have your seats amen it's a privilege to be back in the house of God again where the spirit of the Lord is moving makes the difference amen I'm grateful amen I was in my office and I listened to them tuning up and I was couldn't hold it I'm trying to get up out of here to get in there to worship. I'm here to. Worshiping. <laughs> How the Lord would send an anointing before the Word of God to get you prepared for the Word of God. So you need to go ahead and do all you can do now because you're going to need it to receive the Word of God. talking about ministry Jesus. you talking about this choir ministering and, and I say choir I know it's, it's just a what is it a tenth of them uh, about a tenth of them up here but I still say choir Amen. Woo! <laughs> Because they sing like a full choir. Yeah. They sound like a full choir. Yeah. We have, amen. We bless the Lord. Most grateful, amen. I want you to get your Bibles, and I'm, I'm going to read the scripture from Matthew 7 chapter. I'm going to read the 21st verse. If you would stand, it would be real nice to honor God's word as we read it, you know. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Father, will you bow your heads? Thank you, Lord, for your word in advance. 
thank you for your anointing, for your presence in this place right now. For everyone that is here, as we go into your word, God, open us up. Help us to receive your word. Help us not to push it aside and just decree that it's for someone else, but help us to hold it dear to our heart and hide your word in our hearts that we may not sin against thee. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to talk about, and I heard somebody say something. I want you to understand that God is trying to do something in the lives of Victory Tabernacle members, especially. And he's trying to bring us up out of our will. We can decree it and say, oh, well, I'm, you know, this is the Lord and I'm the, mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm, I'm, mm. just be cool and just be quiet and just sit there and just listen. Listen with your heart and not your ear, inner ear, in your heart and your soul and your spirit. The will of God is something that many times, many people never, ever reach on the face of this earth. That doesn't mean that they are not saved. But it means that they, 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 they were saved, but they, the, the construction that needed to have been done after salvation, they never allow the spirit of the Lord to do it. Man can do it, but that's not the will of God always. But the spirit of God has to do a reconstruction in our lives, in our hearts, even after salvation. And it does not feel that good. When construction begins on you. Now we can look at someone else and talk about someone else and you know and, and, and size them up and say what they should do and how and all of this, but when it comes to us, when construction begins at the house that you live in, it's another story. <laughs> Because we're dealing with our emotions and our will and, and we just don't want to be in a place that we are not comfortable. We, are, we, 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 we was raised to be, to live a comfortable life. You know? Make sure that you have this and, and make sure you have that and make sure you do this and this other is to make you comfortable in life but 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 you can be comfortable in life but uncomfortable in God but we refuse we don't really want to accept that we don't really we, we reject that idea we reject that because we're really not in the place to want to accept what God's will is in our lives there is something about the will of God that makes flesh want to rise up. Uh, trying to convince us that we are in God's will. Now today, I'm, 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 I'm very much aware of the spirit of God and how God came in and blessed. And, and, but the only thing that God was doing was preparing us to get ready, ready to receive the word of God. Because anything that touches your will, we will complain. When your will is being touched, when your will is being addressed, and it's not the will of God, then we have a problem with it. We sort of push back from the presence of God because we feel like as we feel as though we're in God's will, and so therefore, what I am doing is what God wants me to do. If it wasn't what God wanted me to do, why did He allow it? But do you not understand that in life today, you can whatever you want to do, you can just about do it. But it doesn't mean that it is the will of God. If you want something bad enough, you will find a way to, to accomplish it. And a lot of things that we have accomplished, God didn't have nothing to do with it. It was not God's will, it was our will, and we had a tendency of throwing some word over it and giving it a quick bath and say that was the will of God. That was God on, I know God said it to me in the word of God, and the preacher passed, and the pastor preached that word, and it was for me, and that, yes! And the Lord that says, who are you trying to kid? I got issues with you. I got a problem with you. 
something going on in your life that I'm trying to touch. And every time I try to touch it, you push me back. He said, I push, I touch it gently, and you push me back. And sometimes I just get tired and say, I'm, I'm, listen, I'm not going to play with you no more. I'm not going to just try to, I'm just going to come right straight in on you and let you know that your will has got to be destroyed. Your will has got to be broken. And because you say, Lord, 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 does not mean that it is the will of God. Jesus teaches those that was building a house on a rock and saying, and he's talking, not every man that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, everyone that's saying I'm saved is not saved by grace. It's not saved by grace. We are set. Everyone in church is not saved. When I was raised, especially with my grandmother, I had to go to church to go to the joint. I ain't going to no club. You went to church. If you did not go to church, you did not go out the next weekend. So guess where I was on Sunday? In the church. Y'all are not in that generation. That was my generation. And I was like, dog. The same folks that's in the church, I see them in the joint. They ain't mean no difference. You had to go to church. So you have to understand if you want something bad enough, you will find a way to make it happen. And that's what many believers have done. Yes. Calling it the will of God. And, and, and it's, it's not the will of God. God never wants to hurt us. He never wants to hurt you. He wants the best for you. We don't know the best. We think we know the best. We don't know the best. But God knows what's best. So, the, you, you, you know, when you feel like it's, it's all well and it's all good, it doesn't mean that it's all well and it's all good. Th there was a time that I used to go to up north quite a bit. And every time I would go, it didn't matter, it didn't matter the time in the, in the distance of time that it was, they was always working on the roads, especially in Virginia. And I was thinking, by now they should be finished with these rowers. But they was always working on the road. And of course, it, 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 I don't travel at all like I once traveled. And so, but the last time I was there, they were still working on the roads in Virginia. And I'm like, by now there should be nothing to be done in Virginia on nobody's road. But take the trip. I can almost guarantee you construction is going on in the state of Virginia off 95. <laughs> By now it should be free. It should be done. And that's, that's us. We feel like a certain, a certain time limit that we don't need construction. That we are well. We are doing good. You know, we, we just we got this thing going on. We, we good. And there's a sign in our lives spiritually that's saying construction in progress. Anytime there is construction, they tell you to drop down the speed limit. So, so therefore, we are running, we running, we running, we running for our lives. And Lord is saying, you need to stop. You need to stop. You need to slow down because there's construction going on, and you may run off the road or hit something in the road. That's the purpose of saying slow down because everything is not the way that it was. And so in our lives, many times things are not the way they, they are. Things change. Listen, things can change in your life in a daily. That's why we have to pray and trust God and believe God's word that we can stay in his will. Let me talk about Ahab a little bit. We won't talk about us. Ahab loved his wife. 
Now, I'm going to hit some of you all a little bit harder than some of the others, especially if you're married, but I'm going to hit you anyway. And if you're not. Ahab was a king, but he married Jezebel. Ahab knew the word. Ahab wasn't, Ahab wasn't short at knowing the works of God. He did, number one, his, his foundation was good. But he built on that foundation. And what he built on that foundation caused that foundation to crack. Have you ever seen a house that foundation has problems? Simply because the foundation, well, the scripture says this, count up the cost. He says count up the cost. Even if you're going to be saved, count the cost up. You may as well get ready to lose your friends, your family to disown you, loneliness. You, uh, thinking people saying you're better than, and just may as well get ready for a lot of stuff. But many times we take on the building of the, pro of the process without counting the cost up on the foundation. That's what causes the foundation to crack because we did not count up the cost. We got excited. We got moved. And we just said, uh-huh. But we never counted Many of us today need to count up the cost because our days are numbered. My son died at 27. In three days or two days, he would have been 28 years old. The Lord knew before he was born his number of days that he would live. Myself, no. Him, no. But I remember asking him and saying to him, he was standing right there. And, and I said, have you sensed? Do you understand that, that death is following you? And he says, yes, ma'am. And I said in my mind, did he just say that? Or did he just say that? He said, yes, ma'am. He said, yes, ma'am. I said, uh, basically, you, some of you all was here, so, so uh, t taking him back to the repentance prayer. Listen, get your foundation right. If there's any cracks in the foundation, get the foundation right. Don't, 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 don't do that. Get the foundation right, just in case. Just in case. Uh, 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 that, that, death, that your days are numbered and death come. The Lord knows the number of your days. In six weeks, he was gone. And I have to believe that that time, in that time of repentance, that God, that, that God never throw him away in six weeks. I believe that. And I don't care what you say. I believe. <laughs> I believe that God kept him. The foundation intact. And what God is, is, is saying to us, we need to keep our foundation intact. Ahab did not keep his foundation intact. Jezebel, the Lord told him not to even marry out of the faith. Uh. Ooh. Chill it, chill it, chill it. But uh, you know how we do. If we feel it, we just do it. And then throw God's word in. That's, that's God, the will of God. It's, 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 it's the will of God. One of the most important things for you to understand. Your career and who you marry. Let me just forget the career. Who you marry is going to determine your life.
You say, Pastor Kevin, what you're saying? I'm not talking, I'm talking basically and mainly to those that get, get that gets married after salvation. Because before salvation, and you know, you got to deal with that. You ain't looking for no new husband and no new wife. You just ready to get ready to deal with something. Ooh. Lord have mercy. Ah. So Ahab was trapped by his own choices. Many of you are trapped today by your own choices. And Ahab was unwilling to take the right action. That's why he was trapped, because he was unwilling. He was not going against Jezebel. The woman didn't play. Most women don't play. Come and think about it. Ooh. But Jezebel didn't play. And Ahab knew it when he married her. But instead of him in the will of God, Ahab is known as one of the evilest kings of Israel. All because he knew what he should have done. But he did not have the guts of a man to stand against the attacks of the enemy. Uh, that, that was killing his foundation. Uh, you must understand this. You must understand that Satan will fight you to the death about your will. Satan will fight you to your death to declare that your will stays your will that you do not enter into the will and the blessings of God. Amen. Amen. Ahab repented. Ahab, all the kings of Israel, if you, will sit, if you will read and understand, had a prophet that would come to them. Elijah was the prophet that would, that would come to Ahab. But Ahab was resistant. And he says, you always bring me bad news. Like some of you all will say, I go to church and all I hear is bad news. What's bad about the word? Except you don't want to change. Except you don't want to do the will of God. Except you sit and pretty. So you're called. And everything is going well. And I'm very comfortable. And I'm getting more comfortable and more comfortable and more comfortable. So we reject and push away the word of God. As though we're our God. Where you can be your little G-O-D, but one day you're going to need the true and the living almighty God in your life. You're going to need him to come see about you. Look somebody saying you need to fix your foundation. Ahab, you know, it, 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 it may seem nice. It may seem nice to have someone encourage us to do whatever we want to do. Because advice that goes against our wishes is difficult to accept. That's why it's hard for us to accept the word of God. It's going against our wishes. We can read it. We can read it. And we can read it again. We'll take it and turn it around. And point that way and not at us. God's not trying to hurt you. He's trying to help you. He knows the days ahead was coming. He knows. And so Ahab even came to a point in his life that he repented. But he didn't stay there. Sometimes we repent. We don't stay there. That's why Matthew 7 
says, not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my father. Okay, so you're saying, well, okay, well, that's what he's saying, but uh, I understand I got it, you know, my, my own, own version. It doesn't matter about your own version. Everybody got their own version. If I, if I could tell you what I, what I needed to be saved and to be, you know, free on earth and to do what I want to do, it would not be what I see in this Bible right here. Or I would pick a little verse from here and put it together and put a little verse from this way and put it together. But, you know, it don't really work that way. So many, many of our daily concerns and our problems of today, we have directly point to our will. It's, point, it's pointing to the fact that our will has not yet been broken, and God is trying to break that will. He's, we are under construction to the will of God. And what is the will of God? Listen, it takes time to understand what God's will is for your life. You don't, it's not an overnight sensation. Sometimes it takes 16, 17, 18 years to know what the perfect will of God is for your life. Because by the time he gets through breaking us and doing, and, you know, and doing construction on us, and we got to get up and, and then get back down and get, get up, and, and, this, and the Lord is saying, stay down and let me work on you. Stay down and let me work on you. And when we finally get to the place that we can't do nothing but stay down, then the Lord start working on us. 21 years done passed by, and we talk about, I love the Lord. Yeah. I remember the Spirit the Lord said to me one time, and it was so, it was so painful. I'm going to share it with you so you understand. It was something the Lord had promised me, and, and, I, was, and I was having some issue with, with, the, with the promise won't come in the past. And, uh, and I was praying one day. And as I was praying, I mean, I was really, I was praying. I had unthrowed away the Jesuses and the, the, all the little formats and stuff. I done thrown all that stuff away. Man, I was, I was before the face of God, and I was, and I was saying, Lord, you know, I mean, I, I, in other words, I broke down and told him everything. You know, we tell God some things. But I broke down and told God everything. I spilled my heart out. And the Spirit of God was shut off. And the Spirit of God said to me, because you have not received what I promised you, because you are not ready. And if one of y'all had told me, I would have rebuked the mess out of you. I would have told you the devil is a liar. But since it was God, I just said, hmm. And then he, he went on to tell me how I won't read it. And I, and I couldn't do nothing but lay before him and just weep. Because I allowed the enemy to deal with my flesh. Your flesh is a mess. Your flesh is an enemy. And, and your flesh goes with you everywhere you go. And if your flesh is not crucified, Your flesh has to be crucified. And whenever I, le- when, when, whenever I got, when I, whenever, that, when that, whenever that was over, and I was like, Lord, you know, I am so sorry. I am so sorry for what I have caused you. At that point, it wasn't what I had caused myself. It was how, because I wanted to, I want to please him. I, I was so sorry sorry because I disappointed him that he could not do for me what was best for me I know it's a little bit over the top of y'all's heads but just just keep on living he could not do for me what I really wanted because I was I won't I won't read it some things God want to do, he can't do for us. We're not ready. He could not do for Ahab, Ahab what Ahab needed because he wasn't ready. His will was too strong. And, and I noticed that anytime I preach about his will, let me tell y'all something. Let me, let me tell you something. Uh, you, you, you have to understand, 
You don't intimidate me. The devil don't intimidate me. The enemy don't intimidate me. There was a time that, I, that, that, he, that he did. You say, how is that? He intimidated me through you all. Because I really, 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 really was trying to grow a church, trying to get people saved and delivered. And I really, really, really wanted you saved, but I really, really, really didn't want you to leave. So, the, so, so self would say, pull, pull back. Well, that was in some of the things not being ready. Not being ready to receive what God had for me. So I said, you know what? What's for me is for me. Who is for me is for me. And who is not, I'm going to love them and let them go. Ahab lost out because he wasn't man enough. And I'm, I'm not saying it to men, a woman enough to do what he needed to do. You're going to lose out because you're not man enough or woman enough to do what you need to do that the will of God blossoms in your life. your will, your desires. Let me talk to you that are not married. Your will is connected to your soul's destiny. And the conflict of your will against God's will is daily. Don't ever think you say it because you never say it. When you're not, because you can be sold out today. But by tomorrow, you could be 75% off. Why? Because you learned something today that you did not do to take you over into tomorrow. Just like some of you are when you're living at the door today, you're not going to be 100%. God's will. You know why? Because you learned something today. God visualized and told you and talking to you and you saying. So this evening and tomorrow, the foundation, your foundation is in trouble. And what you're building on that foundation is going to cause that foundation to crack. Let me, let me tell you something. Ahab did, and this is something that is very personal to, to individuals, to people. If you never get married, you walk worthy of salvation. No, 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 no. Not sanctification, and not Holy Ghost field, and not the preacher, and not the deacon, and not, no, no, no. Salvation. You walk worthy of that call on your life. And when you walk worthy of that call in your life, that's the only way God can elevate you continuously, continuously, continuously. We don't understand warfare. You, every day you're in spiritual warfare. Every day you're in spiritual warfare. There's an attack on your life. Remember, Satan will fight you to the death. The reason warfare is so strong when it comes to your will and the will of God is just simple. It's just simple. That's something, in other words, don't talk about that. I know about that. Um, okay. Talk to the other preachers. You're talking to the wrong preacher. I don't have no choice. So you have to understand, let me back up. Let me talk about 
just to those that are, are not married. to say you never know what God is doing and why God is allowing it you've already told God yes 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 most of us um, we are attractive to those that don't believe like we believe oh lordy Oh Lord, my, 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 thank you God. Most of us, yeah, we are, most of us are attracted to people that don't believe like we believe. Don't even know what we believe, huh? Because we ain't showing them much of nothing. But you've got to understand this, that the perfect will of God is a divine plan God has for you. Even the kind of person you are to marry. The kind of person. You want a preacher. No, what you want is somebody that's saved. You don't have to set them up and you, you want the dun 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 dun, dun. So that's a lot is coming in. Tall, dark, and handsome. And low boy comes in. It's like, he ain't my type. He ain't my kind. I'm like, say what? He, he ain't my kind. You, 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 you have to understand that the kind of person that you would marry, it's going to determine on your life. Your life will change. Your life will change. Stop being consistent. Stop being anxious. Stop, stop, just stop, just stop. Because it could be the best thing that's happening to you. You say, but I'm getting older. What they gotta do with Jesus? You'd rather be getting older and truly saved and delivered in a fight that you that you're not winning. Ahab messed around, got in a fight that he could not win. Because he was not able to stand up on the foundation that he knew. The conflict, there's many conflicts in us that we don't deal with because it involves our will and we don't want to hurt our will we don't want to hurt we want to be comfortable but we need to trust God God's trying to give you his best God is trying to give him his best and his best comes with the blessings not his second best see Israel got God's second best. He said to them, you don't need a king. I'm your God. You know what they said? Everybody else got one. Give me one. We want one. <laughs> that's what they said. God said, all right. Okay, that's what you want. He said, no, no, but you understand that if I give you this king, what you going to have to do to this king? You have to change the way you treat. You can't treat the king like you treat me. Israel got God's second best. And they stayed in trouble. They stayed in trouble. They stayed in trouble. I'm going to stop it right there. When you get God's 
second best. Generally, you know what you're going to do? Stay in trouble. Or you're going to walk alone. There has to be a separation. And many of us can't afford that. We can't do it because I will. We just want, we want the world to think everything is good. You need to stay off Facebook page. Trying to convince people that life is grand. I don't even be on I'm just saying. But that's what Facebook is. Facebook is lying. Be lying to y'all. And, and y'all be saying, <laughs> I will got to do it for me too. Behind the scene, they ain't happy. We tell all our business that ain't nobody's business. You know why? Our will is to look grand. And God's will is to break you. So you can call him Father Abba. And mean it from your heart. Ahab was trapped by his choices. And some of you all are trapped by your choices. He said, what am I to do? Change your choice.